I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you the ultimate question on application of derivatives. I'd like you to pause the video, copy the question, try to solve it and then look into my suggestions. The question here is, the upper right hand corner of a piece of paper 12 cm by 8 cm as in the figure is folded over to bottom edge. So let's look into this figure. Here is this figure, 12 cm by 8 cm paper. It has been folded over this particular right hand corner. Let me call this as C prime, C dash, has been folded over to that portion, which is on the bottom of the edge, C, right? So once you fold, then this 90 degrees will appear here, correct? Okay? And after the fold, that is the edge DB, which you will see, right? This portion C2B, which is of length x, will overlap with BC, whose length will be x, right? With 90 degrees here. And this length DC will be Z, which I am writing here, DC, right? So that is how it is going to be. So let's continue reading the question. How would you fold to minimize the length of the fold? Okay, so let's go through this question once again. It says, the upper right hand corner of a piece of paper, 12 cm by 8 cm, as in the figure, is folded over to the bottom edge. How would you fold it to minimize the length of the fold? So that is the length of the fold that is to be minimized. In other words, how will you choose x to minimize y? So how will you choose this x? To minimize y so that is how you could understand this question so you can actually pause the video think over it try to solve and then look into my suggestion now this particular solution requires a lot of skills coming together let's begin by understanding the diagram itself so we have 12 by 8 centimeters of paper edge right hand corner has been folded to the bottom edge so the figure will be this is the fold which we need to minimize. C dash B will overlap with B C and C dash D will overlap with D C. So I have named them as Z, Y and X, right? And here, since it is a rectangular piece, that's the right angle. So in the first step, what we will try to do is find the length C A. Let us assume that C dash B is X, then B A will be 8 minus X since this width is 8, right? So we'll find what C A is. We can use Pythagorean theorem. Hypotenuse is X. One of the legs is 8 minus X. So C A is square root of hypotenuse square, which is X square minus that side 8 minus X. So that is C A, right? So you could expand this and uh, simplify. So we get x square minus 8 square 64 minus 16 x plus x square. Right. x square minus x square is 0. You are left with 64 minus 16 x. Right. So once you have 64 minus both with minus sign outside. So I could write this as 16x minus 64 right so that is how it is we could factor 4 and square root of 4 is 2 so it could be written as I mean we could factor 16 16 is common right we could factor 16 and the square root of 16 is 4 so 4 outside and we get this as x minus 4 in the bracket so I just squeezed in all the statements you can do it in greater details so factor 16 first square root of 16 is 4 which I brought outside once you factor 16 you'll get x minus 4 within the square root so we found that C A is 4 x minus 4 square root now we nearly want so we know x we need to find z in terms of x now you will see that these two triangles the triangle D C E and the triangle B C A 
they are actually similar triangles. We have right angles there and right angles here, right? This angle is equal to, that is, let us say, angle B, whatever. So this will be 90 minus B, and that is also 90 minus B. So this, these two angles are equal, right? Since we have two equal angles, we can say that the triangle B a C so we have triangle B A C is similar to triangle C E D C E D right so these two are similar triangles from right angle and that so all angles are same now once they are similar triangle we can say that the ratio of their sides is same so the side opposite to right angle in this triangle is Z we can say that Z divided by the other side we'll consider is known side of 8 DE is 8 for us right so these two sides are equal right so D so we are saying that side opposite to 90 degrees and side opposite to equal angles they should be same so this implies in the other triangle side opposite to 90 degrees is X we'll have X here and side opposite to this equal angle is CA and CA we just found as 4 square root x minus 4 so we'll write this as 4 square root x minus 4 so that is how you can relate side Z with x so if I cross multiply and simplify I get Z as equals to 8 is 2 times 4 right so I could write this as 2x over square root of x minus 4 right I'm going a bit slow here so that you understand how we are getting to the next step at times you may fill in the steps which I have explained but not written right so that is worthwhile now we know what Z is we know what X is we can find Y now that triangle DCB is right triangle where Y could be written as y square equals to z square plus x square correct so it is equals to we could write x square plus z square and we know what z is in terms of x so that is x square plus z is 2x so when you square it you get 4x square divided by x minus 4 right so we substituted the value of z from here correct so so I hope you understand what we are doing we are substituting this value of z at this place right so that is how you get this expression now the idea is to minimize y right so to minimize y it is as good as minimizing y square right so if we minimize y square even then you can minimize y so now we'll consider the function f of x as equal to x square we could actually simplify this further right so we'll just multiply and simplify because this can get cancelled okay that helps so we'll take a common denominator so I'm writing uh, y square as f of x right so I'm writing this as a function f of x so when I cross multiply I get here x cube minus 4x square plus 4x square divided by x minus 4 you get the idea right so so it is a much simpler expression to work with since what we have now is x cube over x minus 4 4x squared and minus 4x squared is 0 right so the function which we'll be now working with is f of x which is x cube over x minus 4 right x minus 4 that is the function which is actually y square for us is it okay which is y square for us now to minimize let's find the derivative for this function and once we find the derivative we can equate that derivative to zero right so that's the whole idea to find derivative we will use quotient rule right so let's find the derivative f prime x is equals to uh, we'll have denominator square which is x minus 4 whole square derivative of x cube is 3x square times x minus 4 and then we have minus x cube 
derivative of x minus 4 is 1 so that is it right okay so we can simplify this let me use a different thing since I want to conserve on this space a bit okay no we can continue with this okay no problem we'll go down okay that's fine so we have 3 x cube minus 3 times 4 is 12 12 x square minus x cube over x minus 4 whole square right and 3 x cube minus x square is 2 x cube right 2 x cube minus 12 x square over x minus 4 whole square right now that could be simplified we can take 2 x square common so this is 2 x square is common and we get x minus 6 divided by x minus 4 whole square so that is that is what we get right so that is our f prime or the first derivative of y square now to minimize this derivative should be 0 so we'll find a critical number so we have f prime x equals to uh, 2x square times x minus 6 over x minus 4 whole square and in this we know it is equal to 0 for x equals to 6 right so it is equals to 0 we'll equate this to 0 and that means the critical number here is x equals to 6 right so x equals to 6 is the critical number for us correct now at x equals to 6 we, there is another critical number 4 but we are not taking this since the y value is undefined is extremely large right? you could take that also but this is extremely large so we'll analyze more for x we're looking for a smaller value not a large value right so critical number is 6 so let us analyze the derivative at x equals to 6 so that is the expression for the derivative let's do it on this side so what we have here is our critical number x equals to 6 we can take a value on left side of this which is 5 and more than 6 let us say 7 well you should remember that the value of x as such is between 0 and 8 right so that is our domain for x correct okay now if I substitute 5 in the function which is f prime x then 5 minus 6 is negative both these numbers are positive they are squares right so this is negative negative. and if I substitute 7 7 minus 6 is positive that clearly indicates that the rate of change is kind of going downwards and after 6 it is upwards leading to a minimum value at x equals to 6 right so we have minimum do you get the idea right so so we finally found that y square is minimum for x equals to 6 now if y square is minimum then this implies that y is also minimum for x equals to 6 you get the idea now let's go through the question once again how would you fold it to minimize the length of the fold right so we need to find the value of x in other words how will you choose x to minimize y right so so we'll fold it at a point b so that x is equals to 6 that is our answer right so the answer is x equals to 6 to minimize the fold or y value right in the diagram right so that is how you can actually solve this particular question so as you can see we have applied the concept made similar triangles right Pythagorean theorem and derivatives all comes together to solve this question it is an extremely important question from test point of view go through this and it will help you to understand the concepts better i hope that really helps
I'm Anil Kumar. You can subscribe to my videos and learn a lot. Thank you and all the best.